so, so far uh, what we've done, we've created the autonomous data warehouse, created some tables, created the credentials, stored credentials. Now we ran the procedure and uh, our next step is actually the tables we created and the raw data which we stored in one of the buckets. So let's go to that. We've loaded all the data files. Uh, in your case, you might have a different name. Uh, you have a ATP upload. Keep that in mind. Let's go to data warehouse. So we'll start loading the data. Uh, we've connected using SQL developer. So we've done that part. So let's get to the data load script. So I will provide the script. In this case, what we need to do is we need to replace the table names to make sure if your table name is different, you put that here, what you created in the previous uh, video. A region name, we'll have to change that here. The tenant name, we'll add that here. And your bucket name, which will come here. So let's give it a try. Uh, and uh, so we'll look at, uh, let's look at the details here. We'll go back to the object store. So we are going to first see uh, what we have for the bucket name. We have the ATP upload in my case. So I'm going to change that. So what I would do is I will say, okay, edit replace with my bucket name instead of this one here. And I will say replace all. So for each table and each data file, we are going to load. We are going to have a separate procedure. So we should have 10 of those because we have 10 tables and 10 data files. So keep that in mind. Next thing what we need to do is have our region name here. So let's get the region name. And this is the region name where our bucket is. We'll go back. We'll uh, do a replace again. And we are going to replace the region name. And it's going to replace all of them. So only difference would be for each procedure is the table name and the data file. Now we want to make sure we have the right tenant name. So we'll go back to our, and our tenancy is in my case is this. So I will go back, do a replace all. I want to replace it with this. And I want to replace the tenant name. So once you have this, you are ready to to move forward. But before we do that, I just want to make sure the credential name which we created in the previous video, it matches the one you created. In my case, it wasn't this. In my case, it was a different name. So I'm going to do a replace here too. So I had taken the underscores out. Replace all. Once this is done, go ahead and save it. I've already have the script ready for my case. So I'm going to use that. So I'm just going to copy all of this, go to my SQL developer. I'm already connected to the database. First ADW, which is here. I'm going to run it here. And hopefully this should load success. So the first one is loaded in this manner. All 10 have to be successfully loaded. So I'm going to pause the video and come back to it when all of them are loaded. Okay, I'm back. So they were all successful. So I can clear it up. Now we've loaded the data. We want to make sure that load completed correctly. So what we are going to do is we're going to confirm that by querying the tables. So it's saying all these tables, which are 10 of them, and the way they were done were copied with the procedure and they completed. And there is a log also of when that was completed. So that's a good thing. We were successfully able to load it. So we'll also let's query the actual data in the table. So what we queried just now was the system table, which keep tracks of how, how many tables were loaded. It's kind of logging table, which we queried. Now what we are going to query is the actual data in, in the table. It's querying the table sales. And what it's trying to find is the type of uh, channel description, how the sales are made. So it looks like there are three types of uh, channel description, direct sales, 
sales through partners and sales on the internet. And it's doing a sum of uh, how the sales were done. So direct sales had maximum at over a million dollars. Uh, partners did around 800,000. Internet around 260. And it's also giving the rank. So because this is the higher number, it's one, two, three. So, so we know the table exists because we were able to query it in the database. Once the autonomous data warehouse is created, what you could do is you can log into the service console. Uh, so this one here uh, also gives you some option. Uh, we'll visit that, what that service console is. What we can do is we can do a terminate here. So we can uh, destroy this if we want. We can change the admin password, give it a new password. We can stop the data warehouse. Let's do that. Here, though, you don't have to write any codes or any query. So that's what uh, cloud makes it easy. In the past, you had to run multiple queries to stop a database. Here, with a click of a button, you could do that. Definitely, if you're going to stop multiple databases, uh, then a script is a better option than going on clicking all the data, clicking on all the database. You want the code to do that part for you with a single stroke. So we are going to stop here. And uh, as soon as it stopped, I'll come back. Okay, I'm back. It stopped. So now I can start it in the same manner. It's a click of button and it's going to start. I'll be back when it started back up. Okay, so it's back up. So let's see if we can query the, the data warehouse again. So I'm gonna go back to our SQL developer and I'm gonna clean this up and run this query again. So what it's saying is it has been reset. So because we stopped and started this, it has been reset so what i'll have to do is reconnect So the data is still there and I'm good to go. What I would like to do at this stage is run a long running query. Uh, you'll know why we want to do this later on. So let me open that query. And what we are going to do a schema browser, what it basically means is instead of being admin, I am going to be a different user. So I'm going to be in a different schema which is called ssb the reason i'm doing that is because the tables are in that schema schema in database is a user who owns that data user with the data is the schema in this case the user is ssb and the data is owned by ssb so if you were to do a drop down from here you could see a lot of different uh, schemas. Now, if there is no data for that user, then it is just a user. I hope this makes uh, sense. So the way I got to, to that uh, window was doing a schema browser. Right click and do a schema browser. So I'm going to go back to SSB. That's where the data I want to query is. I mean, definitely I can still query the da data as an admin. Only thing what I need to do is for every uh, uh, table or an object, I have to put SSB in front of it. So instead of uh, doing that, I'm just going to change my schema. So if I were to run this from the main admin uh, user, what do I have to do is go back and do SSB dot. So in case if I miss anywhere, it's going to to fail. So just to make it easy, I'm going to do that. So I'm going to run this query. 
So it's a long running query, so it's going to take a while. So let's go back to what we were doing. We started the, the data warehouse. Uh, you can also do scale up and scale down. So I can scale it up to the number of CPUs I want, uh, which is good. You don't have to, it's done in the background with a click of button. I just have to click update. If I wanted to do the storage, I could do that. Uh, in our case, it's not going to work because we have limitation to one CPU core count for a free account. If you have a paid account, you are able to do that. So, but you can try it. You can uh, change the the count and do an update. Definitely you will see that, uh, so because we are not changing, but if you were to change it to two and do an update, uh, it would show as if it is going to do it, but it does not. Uh, let me know if it does it for you. At least it didn't do it for me. So, and I did mention about the service console. So I'm going to click that. And if you've never logged in before, this is the first time if you click on that tab, you will get a login screen. The login screen is going to be your admin user and that password. Admin user and the admin password, which was given initially when we created the data warehouse. Now, because this is newly created, um, actually the one which was created for the previous video, I had to drop it because uh, I was having issues logging into it. And I have an SR open with Oracle support, but I didn't want to waste time. So I you know, went ahead and created a new one. So there is an overview. Uh, it shows you the storage used. There is no data to be, to be displayed here. We can go to the activity. And you can see there is CPU utilization. I can see a monitored SQL. So the SQL is running for this much time. But before that, let's look at the activity. So if you look at this one, this is the other sessions which are taking up this uh, database activity. And you can go by the color. You've got concurrency, CPU, which is the green. CPU scheduler, which is a a tool which schedule jobs. Uh, system I/O, user I/O, other. So this is the database activity. You can look at the CPU utilization. Saying running statements. Uh, I could change this time period. So current we, we are here. So I'm going to make this as the increments of an hour. So it's it's saying not much because we just ran the query. So let's do real time and we should see more data. And this is what we are seeing. Now I the query is still running. And so you can also monitor those SQL. So if I were to go back and I can look at the SQL, what all has been uh, executed. This SQL is running for six minutes. And I can, uh, if I want, I can cancel it. I can look at more details. Generally, it requires more time for, for this uh, to populate. So we've not given enough time. So there won't be much to download. I can cancel this for some reason uh, uh, if it is a runaway SQL and it's taking up CPU, I might want to cancel this. Uh, the next tab is administration. So here what we could do, we can uh, Download the wallet, which we did for the data warehouse initially. Uh, we can create Oracle machine learning users. Uh, we can download Oracle Instant Client, send the feedback to Oracle. Also set the administration administrator password. You can change that here if you want. And here, if you're running a query like the one which we are just running, and you're not sure, you want to make sure that uh, 
you that query doesn't take up uh, all of your resources you can always cap it here so in my case let's let's do this uh, uh, we might say 500 seconds and I also will just say 500 IOS so we'll cap it at that so we are setting that any query which is running more than this or which has hit 500 seconds or it has hit 500 IO should be canceled so it's saving now if we were to go back to our query let's give it some time okay so now it's saved so it took a while so here is it uh, it's saying io data limit exit it uh, so that's why it's killing all of it so which is a very good tool so you don't have to worry that you know uh, the users are not impacted maybe you're running a batch process and uh, you want to make sure your batch does not take away from the actual users you can limit it that way hope this helps so that was it now let's uh, we can go ahead and create a a machine learning user it's very simple you say create you give it a name i'll uh, give it and i'm just going to make up an email address so i hope there's no no don carlos uh, I'm going to maybe generate a non-existing uh, domain. It is going to send uh, a password to this email for Don Carlos. I'll say create. Okay, it's created. And definitely this does not exist. So, you know, the password is not going to be set. But this is just, uh, this is how you would create a machine learning user. Uh, we can go back to a SQL developer. Let's look at the long running query. So it's killing each one of them slowly. In a few minutes, uh, this should be ending. So let's go back to our infrastructure. So I would suggest once you create this, look at it after a day or two. You should see automatically backups created. You can also create a manual backup. For some reason, you are going to make some changes to the database. You're going to upgrade or whatever. The case might be and you want to make sure you have a a restore point in case something goes wrong in that activity so you can manually create one to come back to that point in time so let's do that and let's see how it works here first we need to create a bucket uh, in order for the backups to work the bucket name generally has to be let me show it to you it's backup it starts with the backup underscore and the name of your database so i've already created this you know how to do that so you would just go ahead and say create create bucket uh, you would say a standard bucket and you would click on create so i have two so i'm going to just i know why i have two because i had a spell mistake so that's how you create it and I'm going to terminate that so go ahead and create that now after we created the backup bucket we need to make that our default bucket for backups so we are going to set my default bucket and I am giving the details of the bucket this is the command you will only put the the region here uh, in your case it's this uh, could be different and your your namespace so where you get this information let me show you that so this is your region us ashwin and the namespace for your bucket you go back to your object storage click here look at the details and this is your namespace here and that's what you're going to add it here so those are the two variables you need to to change and then you are set and we are going to run this in our database and i'm going to stop this now so i can run this and it has been altered so so let's uh, check if uh, it has been saved in the database so let's uh, make sure uh, we have the credential right so we did create this credential in the past if you remember so in my case I had object store credential so if I were to go back I'll show you in the data load so this is the credential I had created so I have already 
have that. Uh, now, if you want to use a different user, definitely you can create a a new stored credential by following that video, that lab. But we are going to keep it that, uh, so we don't need to run this. We are going to use the existing one. So once we have that, let's run the backup, and and we can also make this a default credential. So let's run this. So this way we are telling the database set my default credential to be object stored credential so I don't have to provide that information again and again so I'm going to run that here so you need to add the users who owns that in our case it's the admin so it's done if I were to run it again it's altered so make sure you have the admin as the pre-qualifier and uh, but again that would change if you're not the admin user if your username is different we can see if we can uh, run the backup so let's uh, name this something so it's creating let's see uh, it might take a while so I'll come back you can see that backup in progress 